Uh, hey everybody out in the shop tonight deciding to try and do a little bit of work on the, the Sonic Mini so it's been a little bit out of commission because my plastic tank uh, that came with it the uh, it's starting to leak even though I've replaced the FEPS I'm and made sure all the screws are in there I'm pretty sure there's a hole somewhere in the plastic uh, the one thing I don't care for too much is that the tank uh, has to sit uh, with these holes over this uh, this press and hardware and I can't use my Elegoo tanks my Mars tanks uh, or even my uh, my um, my photon tanks now I can interchange my Mars tanks and my photon tank all day long and no problem but I can't use those same tanks down here now, um, I can, you know, if, if this tank were any good, I could actually put it up on the Mars or in there, no problem. So I'm going to attempt to modify the, mo the Sonic um, by moving these two uh, pieces of hardware, these two screws. Now, you can see where I've marked uh, the two black dots, and that will accommodate a, um, a new size tank. And so I've already sort of got the guts open. Uh, from the bottom to take a look and I'll uh, I'll take some pictures and some video as I go here to document the progress So here we go. We got the the, the unit back on its on its back. There are four set screws and that set screws But there are four four screws uh, in the corners uh, So the process to take these out is similar to with if you were going to be um, replacing your LCD so I've got all four of those out uh, and we're just gonna open this guy up here. So the only real thing that we need to be careful on, obviously, are the connections. But this is not um, does not look to be super crazy. So it's four screws. We've got the LED array here at the bottom. We've got it tied to um, a power connector there. Um, and what we're going to be getting at this is the back side of those long. Um, hold screws. Now the other one is behind this PCB uh, so I will actually be getting to it from the other side uh, and it's a fairly easy process. All we really need to do is unplug um, the, the ribbon cable for the screen and then that will allow us to gain access to everything underneath that pretty easily. So a quick note everyone um, I was going to pull the ribbon cable off and so I went to the Frozen YouTube channel to look at how to replace it, and it's wrong on their um, YouTube video. So what they show in their YouTube video is that you uh, push this black bar, uh, uh, push it laterally that way, and then come up and do the same at the top. Well, you can see, hopefully you can see, that I've kind of broke mine trying to follow their frickin' instructions. Um, you don't have to do that. It is a hinge. So all you have to do is sneak a fingernail or something underneath it and simply pull up. And then your cable will slide out, hopefully. Yep, yeah, there it goes. So I'm hoping mine goes back together even though part of it's broken. I'll put some captain tape over it as well, but it's... Be aware, I'm pissed, um, but it is what it is. And uh, one other item you'll need to do, because we're going to be taking off this whole plate from the from the far side, uh, is actually just disconnect the power for the stepper motor here. So it's a simple little uh, clip, hopefully. Should just be a squeeze and a pull. Yep, there we go. So it's a squeeze on either end and a pull straight out. So now everything is basically detached from the from the plate here to remove itself from the plastic base. That's really all that there is to this thing. There's not a lot to it, which is kind of it's kind of cool that way. So um, I'll we'll pop the top off on the other side and we'll we'll go from there. Okay, so to remove um, the top platform uh, from the base, it's simple. It's just four score, four screws in the corner, and since we've already done. Um, uh, the 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 ribbon connector and the power for the for the step motor this whole thing just comes off so now we're two separate pieces 
uh, and I'm going to move the base out of the way here. So we've got the, the base off, and so we're just got it laid out here on the table. And you can see here, so it's, um, I don't know if these holes uh, are threaded, so I'm going to remove this hot glue on either side and try and unthread this. So I have a feeling that any of you folks out there that, uh, I, my feeling is, is that they're probably not threaded. And some of you folks that I've seen have um, issues on the, uh, with, with your, um, your tank, uh, your tank nuts uh, just kind of free floating is because this hot glue has come off. Uh, looks like that's all that's securing that. So we'll see here in a second. Okay, so we've got the two screws out, and actually I don't know if you can tell or not, but the those holes are threaded and then just um, glued in place, hot glued in place so they don't spin the opposite way. Um, so I'd say if you've got the problem where you've got those bolts that are um, free spinning, uh, to go ahead and, and um, probably do this this uh, procedure we're doing here and throw some more hot glue on there or even better yet maybe throw some Loctite or something in there so that they don't come out if you don't want to do this procedure because uh, or if you're not planning on doing what I'm doing because what I'm going to do here now is this is um, aluminum um, and so I'm going to drill some new holes where those black marks are and um, and I'm probably not going to thread those holes. I think I'm going to use some hardware to uh, keep them in place. So uh, stay tuned, question mark. This is going to be... Okay, so uh, new holes are drilled. That was uh, relatively easy. I did go ahead and protect uh, the screen with some tape just in, just in case. Uh, and then on the bottom, I just taped back the uh, the ribbon cable for the LCD just because it likes to hang right in the way and I didn't want to take a chance on sinking the drill bit right through it. So the, um, the hardware, these guys, so uh, these came out to be 4.85 millimeters diameter. Uh, so I went with a bit that was just slightly bigger, just a standard hand tool. Uh, it's 5.1 millimeter bit. Um, and so, um, yeah, just a, just a couple of minutes, nothing big, uh, on high speed, uh, and it goes right through. So since it's aluminum, it's nice and easy. Uh, I did notice too, just so, but there is some staining on the right side indicating that some resin has leaked, um, around the edges. So I'll probably tap, you know, tie that off with some, uh, some of the same uh, black tape as well just to keep any potential leaks out so uh, FYI uh, maybe go ahead if you want to and tape the rest of your your way around too so I'm gonna go ahead and put in the hardware then I'll come okay so I get it this is a little redneck but uh, it appears to be working so um, my suggestion to everyone would be is to reuse uh, the hardware if you can um, I was trying to find an M5 uh, nut. I do not have one, uh, so I will likely go to the store. And actually, if you really want to get uh, tricky and, and fancy with it, is when you drill your holes out, just just thread those, uh, and then you can reuse your same hardware. Uh, and then I'm using these large washers just to hold down the tank, because because honestly, it's not going to move forward or back. What you're what you're combating is the suction forces trying to pull the tank up and away, uh, and it does still clear. Um, the Z-Rod and the coupler in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this guy back together and um, hopefully I didn't ruin the, the cable and we'll give it a test to see what happens. Okay, so little issue with uh, the position of the new heads on either side are interfering with this lip. And so I attempted, I was going to go through and actually just trim this out a little bit to allow some space for the heads. Uh, but there's actually a standoff underneath there. And that is what's getting in the way. So instead of doing all that, what I'm doing is I'm just going to raise the whole platform up using these little half inch rubber washers. Uh, and they go right over the holes like that. So it will raise the whole platform up. So, um, so it's just up that little bit and I'll just screw everything back down. That hopefully should be fine. Okay, so there we are. We're all back and installed. Um, I'll probably put some tape over these old holes just in case. 
something happens, but if we go ahead and just dry fit the, the new tank, I'm lining it up with the holes here, it looks good. Again, there is still clearance at the back for the coupler, and as long as we're getting um, that washer locked down, we should be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and crack open the bottom again and connect everything back up and oh, fill this thing with resin and do a test. Okay, so I think we're finished, at least for tonight. So it is not great. So look, don't do this. If you're not a bit of a risk taker, um, I am in whatever. I mean, I've had this thing. This thing has made its weight uh, in gold for me. So if I need, if I ruin it and I need to buy a new one, I have no problem doing it. Uh, but if you're not a little adventurous, don't do not do this. But it's it, it wasn't that bad, right? So uh, just to sort of recap, so we, we drilled out new holes. Um, I will probably put the old hardware back in. Uh, for now, I'm just using some 1032s, some nuts, and these big one and a quarter washers. And they are a little big, so they overhang a bit. Uh, so I'll go get like um, maybe one inch washers. Um, I would probably um, come out a little bit farther if I could. Um, but everything is stable. Uh, it's not moving. It's not moving up and down. Uh, it seems to be fighting suction forces. So again, I've got my... Soraya Blue Clear V2 in there. It's running a test print. Uh, so I had to know something in about an hour. And if it goes completely freaking sideways, you'll never know about it. Uh, and if it doesn't, I'll show it off. And hopefully maybe uh, uh, you guys will do it if you want to or whatever. Um, but if you do do it and you jack up your machine, not my fault. Totally on you. Uh, so the screen did, it did work. I ran the test pattern uh, even with the ribbon cable uh, slightly busted and uh seems to be working okay test pattern came out fine everything's sticking together uh so we'll see if i got a failed print or not here in a little bit okay so we are all wrapped up i do have a couple of prints hanging there so i can confirm that uh this little modification has worked so i'm just going to make special note too about that whole ribbon cable situation make sure you know which type of ribbon cable connector you have because I had to do some wackadoodle stuff to get it to work because after uh, me plugging my ribbon cable back in um, this little black piece here that broke apart uh, it would not function again the LCD was was a dead stick uh, and I had to do some some uh, modifications on the inside to basically get something to wedge that cable down and then captain tape it down. So I don't know how long that's going to last. Um, so my, my uh, again, my warning to you all is just make sure you know what ribbon cable connector you have. If, if it's the slide down or slide out uh, ribbon cable latch or if it's the flip up. Uh, in the video on Frozen's website, they show a slide out. Uh, and many people I've seen on the forums actually have the flip up. Uh, I had the flip up. So shame on Frozen for doing that to people. They should update that video. Um, because it's not like they're covering it. Anyway, I'll stop bitching. But anyway, so that works. So I can now just uh, fill up my different resin tanks with all the different colors that I use standard and just swap out tanks versus going through a whole cleanup thing. Uh, so anyway, there you go. If you, if you want to... Um, venture into this little thing uh it, it works so there you go